Bottoms Commission with another video review. And today we're going to be taking a look at, well, a whole bunch of stuff. As you can see, I went shopping. Now, all of this came from TF Source, where they were having a huge sale on uh, the Impossible Toys figures. Now, some time ago, you probably, well, some of you probably may remember, I reviewed the uh, the Impossible Toys Quintessence, which were custom little figures that I thought were wonderful and fantastic looking. Now, they've put out a whole bunch of other stuff since then, and they have a lot of other stuff coming out in the future, but it's always been kind of expensive for me. TF Source, basically, I think it was a 30% sale or something like that, so I was able to get all this stuff at 30% off, so I jumped on that as soon as I possibly could. As you can kind of, well, sort of see, uh, moving him out of the way, Basically, we have micro men size versions of Spike and Spark Plug. We have a light up with light up action, light up Energon cubes. The original version of Nightbird, in addition to a light up Crimzeek and Spike and Daniel in their exosuits, which we saw initially in the Transformers animated movie, and then subsequently saw in the later seasons and things of that nature. And I just knocked down Spike, so we're gonna stand him back up. Uh, but basically, we're going to have a big old review here and a lot of fun, so let's get these guys open and see what we have. Now, starting things off first, we're going to be taking a look at Spike and Sparkplug, which I basically said are like Microman size figures of these uh, characters. These display awesome with your G1 figures and things of that nature. Starting off with Spike first, now you see uh, it has a four-piece set. You see Spike right there. Also comes with a little stand, I believe a hard hat, and a wrench. It says this function is mechanic, and that's all we have there, so opening this little thing up there we go and everything's gonna fall all over the place yeah the, wow these are yeah these are definitely tiny um let me zoom in a little bit and uh here's spike um wow this guy's tiny to give you kind of an idea here's an actual actual micromen um he's actually a little bit smaller than this guy is uh mostly because these giant boots and things of that nature but uh Ooh, that's small. Holy small. Now, in addition to that, he also comes with a wrench um, that you see I'm holding with a pair of tweezers. Now, you're supposed to be able to put it in his hand, except uh, his hands really aren't molded to hold it, so that's kind of a waste. But then, he also comes with this little tiny hat, which I, I can't get to stay on him to save my life. So, I mean, again, that is super tiny, super tiny. And, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to be able to, my big old Dumbo fingers. Uh, I mean, that's not staying on. Uh, in terms of his articulation, his arms will rotate, except this one here feels like it's stuck. And, um, I mean, I, I move it forward, and it kind of feels like it's going to go back. So I'm not going to rotate it all the way around because I know it's probably going to break that joint. But you can see that rotates. His legs uh, move forward and back. I mean, these are definitely very fragile figures and then uh, he does have a little stand which is cool and we got little peg holes here on the bottom and if I can get that lined up properly come on there we go uh, well I got one leg in there but uh, here you have spike smart probably is uh, pretty much the same exact thing just obviously a little fatter looking so open this little guy up get this out we don't need that in there anymore God, that thing is so small. And here he has spark plug, and as you can see, his hat goes on a whole lot better than Spike's, but uh, this arm also rotates all the way around. Uh, this one is doing the same thing as Spike's other arm, where it feels like it's going to break, so I'm not going to move that. But uh, legs move forward and back, and uh, also he does have a stand that I can peg his feet into. Right, like so. And then he also does come with... A uh, little tiny wrench, but uh, again, his, his hands, you, you really can't have them holding anything. Up next are all things that Transformers need in order to survive, and that's Energon Cubes. As you can see, it's an Energon Supply. Now, it comes with a total of six of these. Here's the packaging form, and then uh, that's all you really get. And it has light up action. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that they light up. As you can see on the bottom here, you have little uh, switches that you can turn and... You, now, it's probably going to be hard to see because, well, you can kind of see it there. I have all my lights on, but uh, there's one, and you just turn these little guys, two, three, and these actually, you know, I, I wouldn't mind having a whole bunch more of these just to, 
really kind of have a cool display with all of them. And this one kind of is annoying. There we go. And then you can see that they light up a whole lot better when all the lights aren't on. Uh, obviously, you see the one little light bulb that's right there that really helps shine through and make them stand out and look really, really cool. Up next, we have Creme Zeke. Now, some people may not actually know who Creme Zeke is. If you don't, watch the G1 cartoon. He was a, a really good friend of Megatron's. Now, we previously got a Crimson Zeke figure before, actually with the Masterpiece Megatron. This is uh, what that guy looks like, and actually really kind of cool. I, I love the, uh, the see-through nature of him. This guy also has that, but as you can see, has light-up action with that as well. So, opening this little guy, if I can. Here, go, come on. Now, this one I've actually already opened up, and I do have a minor problem with it. Uh, if you look here on the back, basically what Impossible Toys, with all their figures that light up, they have this little twist thing here, and that's what actually activates it. You can see this little piece here is actually breaking. Um, now, because it's doing that, one problem really happens is when you try turning it on, the, the plastic doesn't hold the, uh, the actual battery part down. So... It, you can't, I can't really keep it on, but here's Crimzeek, and again, really nice representation of the character. Uh, one thing that's actually cool is his arms are articulated, so they're on little ball joints, so you can kind of rotate them around, and you can kind of pose them like that, but like I said, the, the really cool feature of it is his light-up gimmick, and I can't even... I don't even know if I can keep it on for long enough to... Oh, there we go. Okay. So, um, here he is. And, uh, you can see he lights up very well, um, mostly in the main head area. That definitely kind of throws things off and doesn't really carry through the rest of the body. But overall, it's not too terribly bad. I just really wish that this peg was a little bit different, or this whole mechanism here. Maybe if they actually made the, uh, the sliding section a little bit longer, there wouldn't be as much stress on it or something. But, uh... Overall, I really love the way that this guy looks. Now carrying on, we have the Exosuit 01, which is basically Spike, with the function of espionage. Now you guys may remember these. Uh, this is what Spike and Daniel ran around in, in the Transformers animated movie. And uh, that's kind of cool, so. Ah. Come on, there you go. There, get that out of the way. And here we have the figure. And that's actually pretty cool looking. Now this little guy actually is awesome. I I'm really kind of impressed with how well these actually turned out. Uh, as you can see, it's Spike in his exosuit. Now the little helmet comes off, the little head can go left and right. The arms can rotate, but they're kind of on this uh, like a little screw thing and you, you wind that in kind of as part of its um, transformation, I suppose. So wind those in just like that. Uh, the legs move forward, they move back, they bend here at the knee, but uh, only forward, which, you know, kind of sucks, but, you know, whatever. Now to transform him, well, first, he needs to have his helmet on. Fold these little feet up, fold this, and here you have him in his, um, well, the, not all that impressive vehicle mode. Got the little jetpack down here. Um, it actually does have wheels here on the bottom, which is really kind of neat, but uh, really... The, the best look for this is uh, this right here. Now, like I said, you have to wind these out a little bit to give him some actual arms, but that's really kind of cool looking. And in terms of a size comparison, uh, here he is next to the uh, the Masterpiece 10 release of Spike. As you can see, he's a little bit smaller, but I really think that this scales very nicely with regular, say, Masterpiece figures. And up last is the Exosuit 02 Daniel version. Again, same kind of packaging, just tear this open. All right. Rawr. Come on now. Throw this off to the side. And again, really cool looking figure here. Uh, I'm really kind of... Hey, he doesn't have a helmet on. Oh, here it is. Spike stole it. No, oh, I'm not going over Crimzeek. But uh, again, same level of articulation. It's just a little bit tough to get inside there. And I think the actual wrists... No, well, maybe they don't. But uh, forward and back. Uh, the, the paint sometimes causes these to stick. So you, you definitely can tell that these are, you know, third-party kind of figures. So again, you just rotate all this stuff up. And I'm trying to loosen all this stuff up without breaking anything. There we go. And then you put his little helmet on. And again, here you have him in his uh, less-than-impressive vehicle mode. And that helmet doesn't stand very well. But realistically, 
I think that this is what most people are going to want to be displaying him as, uh, just because that really is cool looking. Um, you have Spike. You have Spike and you have Daniel with their exosuits. I mean, come on. And last but certainly not least is the Nightbird figure. Now again, if you don't know who Nightbird is, watch the G1 cartoons. Function is a ninja. Flip around here on the back. And it says Nightbird is a robotic ninja warrior created by Dr. Fuji Fujiyama Yama whatever, the famous scientist, ostensibly to show how advanced human technology has become. Soon after her activation, Nightbird was stolen and was implanted with an enhanced brain chip which turned her drone-like robot structure into an unstoppable fighting machine. Although she lacks the ability to talk, she more than makes up for it with her actions on the battlefront. She has the ability to perform various human-style martial arts and is an expert at reconnaissance. She is equipped with energy nunchucks and an energy sword that can penetrate virtually any earth or alien metal. Her biggest flaw is she always feels the need to take her enemy's weapons as a keepsake, which at times leaves her prone to capture. So, there you see the picture there, there you see the picture there. Comes with the Nightbird figure, nunchucks, and the energy sword. So let's get her open. And here you have Nightbird. Now, Nightbird really is a very, very simplistic figure. But that being said, it's also fairly fragile. So you do have to be careful if you're going to get this figure. Now, in terms of her accessories, as you see, she does come with that uh, Energon sword thing, which basically just looks like a purple lightsaber. So that's okay. Then store in here on her actual backpack. Stand up there are her uh, Energon nunchucks with an uh, actual metal change, which is really kind of cool. So whoosh, 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 you can do whatever you want. Now the figure, there's no articulation in the head, rotates here at the at the waist, but her arms only move out like that. I mean, they, they also, well, they do rotate uh, here, but again, be very delicate when you're doing it. The, the other problem is her wrists are very limp, limp dick ish now the unfortunate aspect is she doesn't bend oh i guess oh like yeah there's a lot of pivot right there in that particular arm um so moves in and out and all that stuff there's unfortunately nothing i think going on at her elbow except for she can bend it like this so she can go ooga booga 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 I, I, that really is kind of unfortunate and really kind of limits the posability of her which really kind of sucks her wrists are on this very thin very small rotation joint and then she can move back and forth her legs move in and out they're they're really nicely articulated bends at the knee uh, good articulation and then her feet are actually articulated so it's a nicely articulated figure but again there are some parts that definitely could be fixed this is also very loose um i mean really loose that really kind of sucks so you can get some good poses with her as long as you're you're bending her arms like this and i mean that that really kind of sucks that you can't do anything else really with her uh so that really is very unfortunate in my opinion. Very nice looking figure and I'm glad to have it in my collection, but it's very unfortunate that the elbows can't bend, otherwise this would be a really nice figure. Now when it comes down to it, all of these figures are absolutely wonderful to have in a display. The biggest problem being that these are third party products, and with that comes a much higher price tag. For example, Crimzeek himself is normally $15.95, so it only cost me $9.99 which is a much more reasonable price for that little guy. The Nightbird figure normally is $32.95, and I only paid $22.99. And $22.99 is still a little bit more than I would have liked to have paid for it. The Energon cubes, which I think are really awesome, normally retail for $24.99. I got them on TF Source for $16.99. So again, a better price, but still a little bit more expensive than you'd like to pay for some blocks with lights in them. Now the Spike and Daniel exosuit ver versions normally are $69.95. This in my opinion was the best deal out of all these figures. Going from $70, I only paid $19.99 for these two, which is a much better price in my opinion. Then when it comes down to these little teeny teeny tiny guys, they're normally also $19.95, which I basically got half off at $9.99. So basically $5 per figures, which that's not too terribly bad, but yeah, they're still pretty darn small. As I said, every single one of these is a nice piece to have in a Transformers display. It just really depends on what kind of price you can get them for. Because no matter how nice they actually are, 
If they're way too expensive, they're definitely not worth it. So if any of these have an interest to you, while you can, I highly recommend running over to TF Source and picking up whichever ones you want. I'm probably actually going to go and buy some more of these guys. So until next time, guys, I want to thank you for tuning in. This has been Optobotomus. I'll talk to you.